Oh double unders, oh double unders. Why oh why do you continue to torment my f***ing life? <laughs> it doesn't have to be that way. All right, in this video, we're gonna be looking at some tips to master double unders. This video is for those of you who know what a double under is all about. You've tried it a few times, but you've hit a wall and you wanna know how to get past that plateau, what it might be that you're doing wrong that you might not even realize you're doing. This video is gonna point out some of those problem areas so that you can quickly and efficiently sort them out and get to mastering your double unders. First off, I wanna say a big thanks to two guys on this occasion who've requested this video. Uh, keep the comments coming in. Your requests really help to boost the channel by giving good subject matter for me to create these videos. Today, it's a big shout out to Midu and a big shout out to Tejas, I believe, if my memory serves me correctly. Again, apologies if I've mispronounced any of those names. What's funny is that the common theme seems to be wrist rotation. So that's gonna be the first thing we're gonna look at in this video. We're also gonna look at jumping, the timing, the manner of the jump, and additionally, we're gonna be looking at mentality. I don't know whose idea it was, to get people to jump once and rotate the rope twice. It's a st very strange movement. So there's a mental aspect. So there are some mental roadblocks that we want to get over. So we're going to be looking at that too. Thanks to those guys again for contributing to the channel. Keep the comments coming in. I really appreciate chatting with you guys. With that said, let's crack straight into it with the first thing, wrist rotation. So if you've been following this channel for some time, you'll know uh, because I say it pretty much all the time. We wanna be loose in the wrist. Now, it's easier said than done. It's easy for me to say, guys, come on, don't be so tense. You've only got a flying piece of metal or rope or whatever it is at super high speeds with the very real threat that it might whip you. So just be relaxed. It's easy for me to say that, but it's hard for one to get rounded and I had this issue a lot when I was starting to learn my double unders so I empathize there are a few things that might be stopping us from using our wrists in the correct loose relaxed manner one of those is the way we've positioned our hands so if you look at me here if this is you while you're doing your double unders feel free to let me know in the comments down below my hands are pointing outwards it's almost like I'm, I'm using my handles to point away from me this may be for two reasons this may be just down to poor technique, uh, poor handle positioning. Alternatively, it might be because your rope is too long. If your rope is too long, you're naturally gonna compensate by either bringing your hands upwards or extending your hands outwards. And the reason why we subconsciously do this is because if you don't do this, as you skip, that rope is gonna drag on the floor and you're gonna know immediately that that's not right. So you wanna, you wanna try and get around that. That dragging on the floor doesn't work because it just kills the momentum with each rotation. So, first of all, bring those hands in towards you. You don't want your arms out. If your rope is the wrong length, fix it because you're gonna be working at these double unders for a long time, uh, making progressions to build, to beat your personal bests. So you don't wanna get stuck with a rope that's wrong for you. Get the correct length. We've got videos on how to size the correct rope for your body. Um, check those out also. That will allow you to adopt the correct hand positioning, which is bringing your hands in towards your hips and having that elbow tucked backwards. If you have your hands stretched out and your elbows are tucked in, you only have your wrist to power the rope. That's a lot, a lot of responsibility just on the wrist. And so what you're gonna end up doing subconsciously is tensing up and really trying to speed up that wrist rotation. You wanna have this kind of open palmed rather than closed pointing out gesture with the hands. That will allow you to move really loosely with the wrist rather than being pointed out there. There's only so much uh, movement you can get in that wrist very subtle but it makes the world of difference don't tense up in the wrist as you try to rotate i know you have to turn the rope faster but what's actually ironic is that when your wrist <laughs> when your wrist is loose you can actually get it moving quicker if you think about it if i hold my wrist like this and I'm 
doing that, I'm really tense trying to turn it. That's about as fast as I can go. And I can already feel my forearm starting to ache. What you wanna do is get loose and just do that. If you're, if you're really loose and you're turning your wrist like this, it goes a lot faster, okay? Except you're gonna be holding a handle, you're just gripping it. it. Looks like a very funny gesture, but I think that illustrates it really well. All right, moving on. Second thing is jump timing. After wrist rotation, jump timing seems to be another uh, very common sticking point. So we're gonna conduct a little thought experiment. We're gonna think about our jumping a bit differently. If you think of your jump as a journey, going from point A to point B, point A being the beginning of your jump, you go up, you come back down, point B being the end of your jump. Let's call that 100% of the journey. That's how we wanna think about our jump to really transform our jump timing. Now. With that in mind, the double under is two rotations of the rope. You have to get your first rotation of the rope in before 50%, okay? Remember, 100% is the full journey. So before you reach the peak of your jump, if you wait till you reach the peak of your jump, it's gonna be too late, and you're gonna try to really snatch and get those two rotations in really quickly. And then you've got more than 50% of the time to get that second rotation in, which is actually more time than you need because that rope is already spinning at speed after that first rotation. And that gives you a much more relaxed double under. You've got so much time to get that rope underneath the second time. Okay, moving on. Here's where things get really interesting and a bit amusing because some of these things were huge sticking points for me. I'm sure they're quite common. You might see this and recognize this to be yourself and laugh. The last two things are what I call stamping and snatching. First thing we're gonna look at is stamping. Stamping, <laughs> stamping was a huge personal sticking point for me uh, when I was learning my double unders. And the reason why this happens is purely mental. So the reason why I found myself stamping a lot was because I had tunnel vision on getting that one double under. I was so hell bent on getting that one double under that I failed to see the possibility of two and three and 10 double unders. So when you're so focused on getting that one double under, you jump and at the end you stamp, kind of like to, to um, kind of secure it, secure that double under. But when you stamp, you've completely blown your jumping rhythm out and so you're not gonna be able to stamp and then get back up again. You don't have that nice springy kind of bounce. And that was me. That was me all over for the best of three or four months before I was able to think beyond that first double under and just, you know, just, just let myself free mentally and just go for it. What I'd say to get over the stamping issue is look beyond one double under, look beyond two double unders, whatever your sticking point is right now. You're not there yet, of course, but just, just think like you can do five double unders or 10 double unders, or if it is just getting past that first double under, think like you can do two. Expect to do two, five or more double unders. And then you'll start jumping in a manner that reflects this. You're not gonna jump and then stamp to kind of I've got it, I've got that double under. You're gonna be like, eh, one double under, on to the next, on to the next. You wanna think about it differently. So stamping is purely down to tunnel vision. So that's stamping. The next is snatching. Snatching is also uh, a subconscious um, trick that we play on ourselves that prevent us from progressing and mastering our double under. Snatching is, when you've made that first rotation, you're good. But for the second rotation, something comes over you and you feel the need to speed up and snatch that, snatch that second rotation before it gets away. Not good. You don't need to snatch the rope. You don't need to snatch that second rotation. You've got it. The double under is yours. You don't need to snatch it. You have it. Adopt that mindset and everything will be fine and dandy. I think, I think that's what's going on behind the scenes when we're doing our double unders and we speed up on that second one, especially as we're first learning. It's almost as though we're thinking, if I don't speed up this rope, it's not gonna pass underneath the feet, so I've gotta snatch it. Relax the mind a bit more. Just, just adopt the mindset of, you've got it. 
you've got the second rotation. You don't need to snatch it, it's yours, okay? You don't need to snatch it away before someone else takes it away from you or something. This really was my thought process. It was that, you know, that double under, I've got to get it. It's, it's, not, it's not gonna get there if I don't speed up this rope, but trust yourself, trust your jump timing. Like we've said in the previous point, if you think of your journey of your jump as 100% and you get that first rotation in, before 50%, you've got so much time to get that second rotation. So don't try to snatch it. The reason why snatching doesn't work is because you've taken your rope speed from a certain level and then sped it up. And now that, that difference in uh, speed is completely out of rhythm. That difference in speed does not correlate to nice, continuous, relaxed double unders. You want that rope to be spinning at a consistent speed. Let me know if you've experienced this yourself down below in the comments. This and the stamping were the two big things for me. So that's about it. That wraps up this video on double under mastery tips. Look at yourself, assess your training. You need to realize where you're going wrong and fix that. As a, as a mechanic might look into a car for a problem area, fix that and the car runs smoothly. Remember your wrist rotation technique is what we looked at before. Stay nice and loose. Remember also your jump timing. Remember the journey of your jump and how you're gonna rotate your rope accordingly. Remember also not to stamp and not to snatch, okay? These are all mental blocks that we need to overcome and you will overcome it with persistence and with patience. It sucks when that rope hits you a bunch and you know it's a bit demoralizing but it's all part of the journey it's all part of the process so that wraps up today's video if you found this video helpful do not simply click off the video and continue to go about your day I will be deeply hurt and it will ruin my day entirely <laughs> but seriously if this video was helpful for you please do hit that like button please do drop a comment. Let me know which of these sticking points pertains to you more than others. If so, um, I'll be glad to chat about it. And if you wanna see more videos like these, please do subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you're informed anytime a video drops. Thanks again, really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. I hope it helps. And until next time, all the best with your training and stay raging.